Okay, our, our next uh, speaker in this session is Jayant Kali. Jayant is the Philip R. McDonald Chair and Professor of Finance. Thank you, it's really nice to be here. And what Nada was presenting was actually so interesting, so maybe I should have given her most of my time anyway. <laughs> but, uh, no, there it is. All right, so I too have been in this business for a very long time. So, you know, I've had lots of things that I've done in the past. So what I thought I would do today is basically talk about something that I'm working on recently. And I'm going to follow a slightly different approach than what NADA did because I'm going to describe what I'm working on in little bits on each paper so that, you know, the hope is that someone here may find it interesting and maybe it will lead to future collaboration down the road. All right, so my research basically focuses on recently on two themes. One is the role of non-financial stakeholders and how these non-financial stakeholders affect corporate decisions. And I'll explain it in a second what I mean by this. And the other one, the other theme is how do explicit, that means based on pay, and implicit incentives such as promotion, et cetera, affect you know, performance of agents as well as the performance of the firm and firm value. So what I do is, I, I mean, I work in finance, but I borrow very heavily from concepts in labor economics, from industrial organization, and so on, and recently accounting to kind of address some uh, questions in finance, okay? So that's basically the overview. And I write papers primarily in corporate finance, but also I have done some work in special aspects of asset pricing, and I'll tell you what those are shortly. Okay, so what do I mean by non-financial stakeholders? So if you look at the firm, and this is what finance has mostly been concerned with, this firm is this little circle here. So the firm belongs to an industry, and the firm is also supplied by a bunch of suppliers who supply to that industry. And also it has some of these, many of these customers who may be industries too. So in addition to this, the firm also deals with labor. It also deals with, uh, you know, the government, other regulatory agencies, etc. So these are all the non-financial stakeholders. The financial stakeholders would be people who actually are directly claimants on the firm, such as bondholders, stockholders, etc. But the interests of these non-financial stakeholders are also important for the performance of the firm. And that's what a lot of my research shows. All right. So in the past, the way a firm was defined was as a nexus of you know, contracts. And most of them were explicit contracts. And these explicit contracts were with shareholders, bondholders, and managers. And there's a bunch of literature on this. Okay, <clears throat> But what I do now is bring into play these implicit contracts, the kind of implicit contracts that you might have with suppliers or with customers. And to give you an example of these implicit contracts, so suppose Apple introduces a new iPad, right? There is no explicit contract, but the implicitly the Apple is, uh, the company is also telling you that I'll make it possible that down the road that you'll have some software or apps that can be used with it. So that would be an implicit contract, okay? So I look at the importance of these implicit contracts and how a firm's financial decisions and to some extent also asset pricing is affected. Okay? So that's basically the whole idea about these. Okay. The time goes fast. Okay. <laughs> so the first paper, it's simply looking at how a firm's financial decision is affected by when, it, when you take into account the interests of it's your supplier industries as well as your customer industries. So this is an empirical paper, and the idea here is I want my supplier to make inv uh, investments that are specific to our relationship. Okay, So these are what we call relationship-specific investments. And these investments maintain value as long as we still have the relationship. So if the supplier is not convinced that this relationship is going to last, and one reason the relationship might break is if my firm goes bankrupt. Okay, so how do I convince the supplier that I'm going to be okay? So I do that through a, a commitment equilibrium by keeping a certain my level of debt low. So that is one of the hypotheses that we test in this paper, and we find a very significant amount of evidence which is consistent with that. So that would be one. This paper looks at a slightly different, the second one looks at slightly different part. So this is kind of maybe of a little more interest to the marketing people. So this looks at again at the customers, 
But what happens when a firm offers product warranties? The fact that a firm offers product warranties, how does it affect its financial decisions? And by logic similar to the one in the earlier paper, we show that firms that offer product warranties, for those product warranties to be credible, they must maintain lower levels of debt. And so we actually present some kind of interesting tests in this and interesting data to show that that is indeed true. Then the last one in this uh, is a more recent paper where we look at the role trade credit plays in determining, you know, how uh, trade credit plays a commitment role in this relationship with suppliers. So take the case, take the case that let's suppose I'm a supplier to your firm and I have to give you an input which is supposed to have certain properties. If, and the idea is that if you just look at that input, you cannot tell whether I have put in enough amount of technology or whatever I'm supposed to put in. So then what we show is that giving you credit is a way of committing to you that I have actually put in the necessary amount of R&D or necessary amount of input uh, into ma making that particular product. So in this, we actually uh, have a theoretical model and we also show empirically that that is indeed true. So these are, those were the recently published papers. This paper looks at how labor markets, that's the other set of non-financial stakeholders that play a part in uh, uh, firms' financing decisions. And this, another, another paper, this second one, it basically combines both incentives and these relationships with, uh, this red color is scary. Okay. Yeah. So it basically combines these as uh, aspects of uh, incentives as well as non-financial stakeholders. And basically what we do here, and since I don't have much time, let me tell you a little bit what this paper is about and then end there. So let's suppose I'm the supplier to you, or you're the supplier to me. I'm the firm, okay? And I'm the CEO of the firm. I want you to make, again, those relationship-specific investments. Now, you will make those only if you believe our relationship is going to last because otherwise those investments lose value. So you don't want me to take actions in investments or in capital structure, et cetera, which will increase the risk of my firm. If my risk goes up, then you're less likely to make uh, those relationship-specific investments. So what is the thing that you can observe about me? You can't really observe my investment decisions, okay, except the big ones. But one thing that you can observe is my, the structure of my compensation. So on the basis of the structure of my compensation, you can look at you know, the kind of options I have, high-powered incentives I have. You can determine what is my risk-taking incentive. So in this paper, for each CEO for the firm, we figure out what are their risk-taking incentives. And then we relate these risk-taking incentives to the, uh, to the level of relationship-specific investments that are chosen by suppliers and customers. And we actually take this framework to data and show then when the firm uh, risk take, firm CEO's risk-taking incentives are very high, its customers and suppliers reduce the level of relationship-specific investments they make. So this has actually one of the first papers which actually looks at that a CEO's compensation scheme affects not just the firm, but also people in the supply chain. And, you know, if supply chain is important and it's value creating, then it definitely affects firm value. And I'm one minute over time. Sorry. So. Thank you. A whole bunch of other sides that I didn't go to. This is a thank you. All right. Thank you very much.